Welcome back to another episode of Everyday Man of God Ministries. I am, as always, grateful and thankful that you are here and taking your time to listen. I will say that this will be, I don't know if it's my final episode or just an episode, final one before I go on hiatus. I am going to take a break from the podcast and I am going to concentrate on my videos of which you will find on both Rumble and YouTube. I want to talk about preaching the gospel tonight. Now the reason I'm leaving the podcast or putting it on hold for now is videos I'm able to make much faster, much quicker, and I have more time, or I should say within the time constraints that I have, I'm able to make videos quicker and faster, whether they be in my truck, in my podcast room, which will for now just be the uh, video room, I guess you could say, because I spend a lot of time throughout the week getting ready to do a podcast on Saturday night. However, we will be, in the future, beginning a house church, so I will be concentrating more on material for that. But, I will also be doing Rumble and YouTube, therefore I can still make 5 minute videos, 8 minute videos, um, and still talk about current events of the day, or things that are on my mind that the Lord has pressed for me to share in a video. And things, just a lot of different things we're going to go over and do from from my point of view, at, again, with like the title or the name of this podcast, also my same name as my Rumble channel and YouTube channel is Everyday Man of God Ministries. And I, I like to think of myself as just an everyday man of God, just going about my business. I don't have a big fancy church or anything like that, but there are other things that have to be done. Even with my own family, I want to spend more time in the Word of God with them. I have two young boys and a teenager. Um, the oldest one, he's going through his own, I don't want to say trials or tribulations, uh, but he's struggling. Um, I think a lot of us do, even though if we have the Word of God, we struggle because we have the world attacking us. Um, this world is more ruthless than it's ever been and more deceptive and more deceitful and dangerous in every way than it ever was when we were growing up, even though we thought it was bad then, which it was. It was worse than what our parents went through. But it's much worse now, and there's a lot more to deal with if you're a parent. So preaching the gospel. So a lot of people ask or wonder how they can go and preach the gospel. Do you need to be in a church building? It's common to hear that. But there are so many different ways that you can preach the word of God. Maybe you are sharing it at work, which is a form of preaching. Maybe you are sharing at the grocery store nearby. That's a form of preaching. So, we have to ask ourselves... What is the best way to go about it? Well, I don't think that there's one single way to do it. Anyone can go out. And when I say anyone, I don't mean if you're not saved. No, you, you can't. Just go out and do it. But we are called, you know, there's a line from a song from Don Francisco. Not to be confused with that Spanish guy. There was a, some Spanish guy. I was looking up Don Francisco one time on the internet to see um, if he had any new music out at one point. And up popped this Spanish guy from Telemundo or something. And I'm like, that is not the same Don Francisco. But he had a line in a song, and I think it's called Chainsaw Massacre. And he was, and I should have looked at the lyrics scan, but it was uh, saying that the uh, preacher stepped up to the pulpit and he had a, he ripped out a chainsaw and cut the pulpit and uh, 
I think he said it, he his name's not Pastor Tim or something like that. It's just it's just Tim. And I got my might be get the name wrong, but he then said, "We're all ministers here. We're not all little kids. When you're saved, in your own right, you are a minister of God. If you're a woman, you're 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 not the minister the ordained style like." You hear about in those different heretical churches. But you minister other women. Maybe it's pregnant women. Maybe it's at daycares. Maybe it's in, in different forms. And if you're a guy, obviously you can be called to be a pastor or pre I should say preacher instead of pastor. Because you're preaching the word of God. I don't know if you're, I've never heard the term pastoring the word of God. But we all have a calling. And for me... I believe I'm meant to preach. It's something I wasn't sure if I should do or not. Um, that's why we'll start the house church. And I fought this for a long time. It's So I had always wanted to be a pastor. And then years later I realized we're not to call ourselves pastor. But then again, when you grow up in a heretical church and teaches that, that's what you believe until you go out on your own and you start to understand these things. When you step away from the church buildings, suddenly you find some truth. Now, and I'm not saying everybody in the church building is a bad person. Don't misunderstand me. I think some people in church building are very good people. They're just in the wrong place. And where do they go? You can find a church online or a church building online a lot faster than you can find a house church online. Interesting how that works, but word of mouth. But we are living in a time when those church buildings will disappear anyways. But we are all called to preach in some way or another. I want to go over a few scriptures that talks about the fact that you're not supposed to be in the building. In Jonah, chapter 3, verse 2. Arise, go into Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it preaching that I bid thee. He called Jonah to go out there. Now, we all know that it was somewhat against his will, even though he's got free will. He wasn't sure that he wanted to go out there. He didn't want to be faced with that. He's like, oh, man, can I not do that right now? That's kind of, yikes, that's a, that's a lot to ask, Lord, anything from that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist, Preaching in the wilderness of Judea. In the wilderness. There was no church building. Remember, what did they have back then? Synagogues. And what do we look at now as New Testament causes? Synagogues are false. I mean, we'll go into a deeper study someday, but uh, or maybe not. If I don't go back to the podcast, I'll do it in a video. But the synagogues are not good people. Who's, who's there? The Pharisees. You know, side note here, you ever look at the Pharisee and the and the Pope and the Roman emperors? You could throw in the Egyptian emperor, uh, pharaohs too. All look the same, don't they? All kind of the same style of dress, the same rituals and traditional ways of walking down a, an aisle. And all the hats match. Just saying. Turn to Matthew. I want to make sure we understand. I am reading from the King James Bible. as the only Bible of which I read from. Unless I am showing you uh, errors and things that were deceiving in other New Age versions. I only read from the King James. Matthew 4. No, actually, you know what? We'll do Matthew 9. Matthew 9, verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. See, he didn't ask you to come to his church building. He didn't ask you to come to his temple or his synagogue. For crying out loud, Jesus is the manifest, God manifested in flesh. So, yeah, this whole earth whole world is his synagogue, his temple, if you want to use those words, his church building. 
So your church buildings and your little synagogue, they do nothing. Most of which they don't glorify God at all. All of them are just evil people. A lot of them. They think they know right. And they don't. At that, I shouldn't say they think they know right. They know right. But they want you to do it, not them. Matthew chapter 12, verse 41. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation, shall condemn it, because they repented of the preaching of Jonah's, and behold, the greater than Jonah's here. I was just throwing that one in. Jonah preached, and they turned him down. Some, but a lot of them repented. They believed him before Jesus. That's sad. Now, if you turn your Bibles from Luke chapter 3, verse 3. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. I'm going to beat this horse, this dead horse, as the old saying goes. I hope that's not an evil saying. I've never looked up the origins of it, so someone can correct me on it. But he came out to the country. You didn't have to travel all the way to a synagogue or a temple where you can act holy and pious and or more righteous than you actually are. Luke chapter 8, verse 1. And it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. What's that? He went throughout every city and village. My time in my own personal life, and it should be in yours, should be more time out there passing out gospel tracts, giving someone a Bible if you can, bringing the word of God. You don't have to hold up big signs, what's his signs, turn and burn, and all that stuff. You don't have to do that. You can just hand out gospel tracts. I said this before a long time ago. If I hand out a hundred in a day and one reaches someone who actually finds meaning in it, that's a win to me. That is a win to me. Or I should say a win to God. Luke chapter 9, verse 6. And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Again, they didn't go to a church building. Acts chapter 8, verse 4. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere, preaching the word. Again, they went everywhere. They did not stay. And oh, well, that explains missionaries. Really? I don't understand this whole missionaries, by the way, that bring their whole family with them. I don't understand that at all. That never made sense to me. I think they're. I think family guys, family men, should not be going out to different countries and different places and dragging their family with them, preaching the word. I don't. I think that's wrong. You're already going to be dragging in the end times. You know, when the times get bad and you might be evicted from homes and all types of stuff. I really think missionary work should be for single people. Acts chapter 8 verse 12. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Where was Philip? Oh, he was at this little uh, his church down the road. He had this, uh, he just rented this place and uh, got a lease out. And he's 501c3. No, 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 not at all. Acts chapter 10, verse 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Acts 11, verse 20. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. Again, going different places, preaching the word of God. By the way, I believe married men can go to the street corners and preach. You don't have to be a single man for that. I, I think there's nothing wrong with going out there. I think some people are weird and crazy when they do it and are seeking more attention. And I don't, I've struggled with this one. I don't think I, I, I don't think it's right. 
I'm not quite sure, but I don't believe it's right to video while you're preaching on it, especially the ones who who pull people aside in a private prayer and they got it on YouTube. I'm like, that's a moment that should not be shared, and that really, really bothers me. And you have to preach the word. You have to have someone videotape you all the time preaching. I don't know. I'm not condemning those guys, but I don't know if I think that's the right way of going about doing it. You don't need an audience. You don't. You can do YouTube channels and rumble at home or, or on the side and talk about things. And then when you go out preaching on the street, you don't need a man with a camera. Unless you have a guy in a backup in case you've been attacked or something like that, then you have photo evidence, a video of evidence. But other than that, I don't think it's right. Uh, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not, let's say that again, was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Enticing words. Yeah. Enticing words. You see that a lot, don't you? With the Joel Osteens and the Creflo Dollar. Well, Creflo Dollar is a little weird. Uh, uh, Perry Stone, John Hagee, um, Kenneth Copeland. Uh, I'm trying to think of a lot of these guys. Uh, Rick Warren is another one. All these guys feel good and they're enticing. Oh, this sounds good. Remember, if you use worldly things to bring them into the church, well, you're just worldly. Don't sit here and tell me, he goes, well, I was just using it as a hook. If the word of God isn't the hook enough, then you failed. Or they're not meant ready. Every man should be convicted. If they're not convicted, then you didn't bring the word right. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14. This will be the last verse that I give. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reached not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Do not sit in your pews. Do not sit there on your Wednesday nights and feel good. That you went to church on Sunday. You went to church Sunday night. You went to Bible study on Wednesday. You went to youth group on Friday. What does all of that mean? Unless those are classes or or discussions and, and, and teaching and training for you to go out into the world and preach on the street corners. What's the point? What's the point? To prove to the guy next to you at Bible study that you know about the Bible? Who cares what he thinks? You should be out there bringing the word of God. And for me, I have lacked that. And I've spent more time on my podcasts and getting them ready. And I'm not ungrateful for those who have listened. But I've spent more time preparing for that than being out there. Being in the midst of it. Handing out tracks like I did before, being talking to everybody I can. And if you are born again and you have fallen on this, get back up and get back out. I know you're saying, well, I can't afford gospel tracks all the time. I get it. I understand that too. There are websites that have them marked off, some old ones, but you, you could still go out there. You could still go out there. You can ask each person as they walk by, Hey, do you want to know about Jesus Christ? I'm just saying, there's a hook for everything out there. But then when you hook them, what bait did you use? The bait you think they want to hear? Or did you hook them with the truth? Because sometimes the truth isn't always enticing, but it's the truth. That's what matters. So for all of those who've listened over the times, I think I've, I was looking at a, uh, 
the analytics of uh, uh, of this podcast, and I think I reached. I, I've been lucky, or I shouldn't say lucky. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to to reach into I think eight different countries, the Netherlands and Ghana and different areas. So really, really thankful for that. I really am. And those for you, those of you who are listening tonight, um, you can find me at Rumble and you can find me at YouTube with the same name, Everyday Man of God Ministries. And I will be there more often, actually, because, again, like I said before, I will think, talk about things off the cuff and in the moment instead of preparing for these podcasts. So a lot of things will be just more off the cuff, and they could be about a lot of different things, a lot of different directions that um, what I want to do in the first place, really talk about what what we go through as everyday man of God. A lot of pastors that are in church buildings don't understand that because, you know, they just, they go to, some aren't even working, they get paid by their church. Um, they're not in the midst of it like we are. I think the guys that are going to the church buildings I'm more righteous than the guy standing up at the pulpit preaching down to those who are sitting in the pews. That's my opinion. So, again, thank you. Um, pay attention. Uh, tune in on uh, Rumble and, and YouTube. And YouTube would be tough because some people have said they tried to enter my name they couldn't find it. So, don't understand what's going on there. Um, hopefully that's not the case anymore. I think it might have been because I did a lot of COVID videos in the past, way back and uh, was giving real numbers on that. And not to be f- fearful of it, the Lord has got you back. Um, but Rumble is easy. You can type my name there so because they don't shadow ban or ban you from my, my understanding. So with that, thank you. God bless. And you have a beautiful evening. And thank you for tuning in. Good night.